Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's study, we're going to be talking about the effects of sin and how these sins affect our lives. So I want you to sit back, get a paper and pencil, and be ready for a mighty, mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm-hmm. God bless you. We're going to be talking about a subject tonight that uh, a lot of people don't like to talk about. So, what we're going to be talking about tonight, we're going to be talking about sin. Do you hear what I said? We're going to be talking about sin. Look at your neighbor and say sin. <laughs> a lot of churches don't want to talk about sin. You know why? Just so they can keep membership. I have to write all this stuff down. Just so they can keep membership. Well, if Jesus talked about sin, we should talk Amen. about sin. Tonight we will be talking about the effects of sin. The effects of sin. I know the holidays and all that stuff is coming up. And maybe Warren should be bringing all this glorious, hallelujah, Jesus stuff. No. Because I'm finding out a lot of times we get around these type of days is when sin begins to permeate in our lives. Because we, we start to conform to the world's way of doing things, even though we're Christians. Amen? Amen. But we need to know who we're celebrating during this time. And this is a great time to say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to get my life straight. You know, don't be making no New Year's resolutions and all that. Just make up your mind that you want to serve him and turn your mistakes over to him. Right? Amen. So, tonight we'll be talking about the effects of sin and to the believer and how you need to stand against sin. There are two sides of the coin you can have. You can lean on the issue that we all make mistakes, I can't help it, which a lot of us do. Or you can say to yourself, if you, if you make one mistake, you think you're not out of the will of God. Some people are like that. They think they sin down and figure, hey, I can't come to Christ until I get it. No, you can still come to Christ. This doesn't mean that God will excuse it because sin has its own price tag. How many of you know that? Sin has its own price tag. Mm, amen. Amen. Now watch this. The reason why it has its price tag is because sin is devastation. Sin can stop your growth. Sin can cause setbacks in your life. Amen. And sin will utterly destroy you. I'll say that again. Sin will utterly destroy you. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this word. It's getting ready to come forth. Father, let your man servant walk with the word of your word, that he be edified, establishing, building, and guiding the men and women of God. Let me decrease and that you may increase. Let me walk on the word of your word as I always ask. Because tonight, this message is not only for them, but it's also for me, my family, my friends, my co-workers and laborers in ministry. And all those who just want to love you and serve you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say amen. Amen. Now, my last statement was sin will utterly destroy you. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I got a lot of information here. But I want to feel pretty good. I want to let this thing feel pretty good. So Hebrews chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 12 and 13. Hebrews 3, verses 12 and 13. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. While it is called today. Build someone up while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of what? Sin. Sin. Amen. Let's any of you be part of the deceitfulness of sin. All right, we're going to be covering at least six points concerning the effects of sin in our life. Right? Number one is sin is deceitful. Look at your neighbor and say deceitful. Okay. Sin is deceitful. We're going to prove it out. We're going to go right to the beginning. Go to Genesis uh, chapter 3. Sin always makes itself like it cannot defeat you, and there is no harm in doing wrong. 
It always makes you look like you won't defeat you. Ain't nobody in here that sin does it because it hurts. Does it because it feels bad. Does it because, you know, I'm gonna get sick tomorrow. You, if you knew that would happen, you wouldn't sin. Amen? Amen. Everybody in this room, including me, sin because it feels good. But that moment is self-gratification, sin of the flesh. Amen. I'm only getting started. Y'all can't even hit the hit the hair on the nail yet. Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> Sin always disguises itself as pleasant, feel good, nice, and sweet. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 3. It always disguises itself that way. I know that's right. Matter of fact, I couldn't wait to sin half the time I was out there. Amen. Looking forward to the day. Hey, day is a sinful day. Amen. Some of y'all wait for the first of the month. I can't find none of you on the first of the month. This room be empty as I don't know what. Why? It's a sin day. Time to sell a pool stairs? <laughs> mm. Time to go get what you got to get, right? Two days later, you're back in here looking like that. Sin! Felt good for it. <laughs> Amen. Look at uh, Genesis 3. Look at verse 6. We're going to see if this thing started in the beginning. We're going to look at verses uh, 6 and 7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, you're going to lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, y'all. And the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. I heard her pretty preach talking about the husband was also with her. So didn't it say Adam was standing right there? No. He was standing right there. That shows you how much influence you got, ladies. Because that's what Adam was supposed to tell that servant, get away from my wife. But he was in awe over you. You couldn't say a word. <laughs> he ain't never seen nothing like it. Verse 7. And the eyes of them were both open. Pay attention to that. The eyes of them were both open. And they knew that they were naked. And they saw, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, isn't it amazing that our eyes become open once we sin? Or after we sin? All of a sudden, man! Why did I do that? You automatically do it sometime when you're on your way to do it. You know, no, I'm just going to put this little bit here. I'm just going to get one. I'm going to hide the rest of it. But isn't it amazing? After we finish sending our eyes open up, and the devil does that, why? To cause you depression? To cause you to feel guilty? To cause all these things, man, I should have put the baby back. I should have filled the refrigerator with food. I should have paid that bill. Amen. Now, your eyes are open. Isn't it amazing the eyes became open? God wants our eyes open before we even do it. I thank God there's a lot of sins in my life now that I can see them coming before I even get there. Or before they even get to me. Took me a long time with spiritual maturity to learn. I see you. Now let me do this one. I don't walk toward it, people. You walk away from it. Amen. Ain't nowhere in the scripture that told you to go battle it. Matter of fact, especially a lot of sins, the Bible tells you to flee. Run! But we think we're so spiritually mature, we want to go and try to fight it. We will get defeated. <laughs> this flesh can't handle certain sins. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is how Eve was looking at it. Let's see how God was looking at it. Go to Genesis 2, 17. Genesis 2, 17. <laughs> but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. That's God telling you. Giving Adam the word of God, right? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt what? Surely die. Amen. Sin will kill. You need to know that if you didn't die in your sin, that was God saving you. But there are some people who are going to sin and God won't let you die. Just so the devil won't receive your soul. See, that's the part we really don't get. He'll let you get that ease. He'll let you have that heart attack. He'll let you have that stroke. You be like, that's the devil. Not all the time. Because God knows if I keep letting you live and continue to do what you do, the devil will get you so. So I might as well kill you and bring you home so the devil won't receive you. Amen. That's still his love and mercy. Amen? Amen. 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 Go back over to verse, chapter 3, verse 6. Now we saw that God said that God said you will surely what? Die. 
Now watch what happened. What happened to the woman in verse 6? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, right? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. See? Amen. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. So here it is. What did they do? They said, no, I'm not going to follow you anymore. One of the things I like to say about this, and they ain't even going to notice, but that always amazes me when I see that her husband was standing there with her. Because how did the devil trick the woman? You know, we blame the woman, but I need to blame the man a lot, too. We always blame the woman. The woman received what? A period? Because of that? And what? Pain in childbirth. God said, I'm going to make sure you have a period every month, and you are going to now have pain during childbirth. But the man gave her the word. <coughs> Did God say don't eat or touch, or did he just say don't eat? So when she quoted the word of God, she told the, she told the serpent, don't eat nor touch. Mm -mm. You saw in verse 6, don't eat. So when the devil knew she misquoted, he used it. So now you see it was evidence he used what came out of her mouth to get her to fall. How many times he used what coming out of your mouth to get you to fall? Amen? That's why I said be careful what you say. Because that's how he operates. Or what you say. Be better off, don't say nothing. But there's a, there's a verse in, uh, I think it's Numbers 30, where the Bible tells that man remains silent. And because he remains silent, the sins of the woman and his daughters fall upon him. Because he didn't make what his wife said, utterly void on the day she said it. That became a law. A man is supposed to make whatever his wife said that's incorrect, shut it down. Now I don't mean you put your foot on top of her and cuss her out and control her. That just means that you are wise enough as a leader to know whether or not what's coming out of her mouth is correct or not. But you're not going to do that if you don't know the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 That was a short break. Who cares how good it will taste? Who cares how good it will taste? There was a day that there was a lot of things that tasted good to me that don't taste good today. It's the result of eating it. It was the result of eating it. Now, the sin happened because she ate? Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. You know why? She influenced him. Remember I told y'all your influence, how powerful your influence is? She been sitting there it. But when she looked at her husband, standing there with them, he did eat. She influenced him to eat. So when they agreed, sin came in the world. So she could have ate all day and Adam had never touched that and we'd still be talking to them today. Wow. So her influence caused the leader to eat more. <laughs> yeah, man, this tastes good. Don't look at me like that, Marty. <laughs> all right, all right, this is the result of eating it. This all deals with temptation. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. This all deals with temptation. I can tell y'all, ladies, y'all know what kind of power y'all got sometimes, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just caught myself. They know. They know. They show sure enough, dude. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. 4, 22. That you put off concerning the former lifestyle. That's where conversation is like that. That you put off the former lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to the what? Deceitfulness of lust. So you need to put off the former lifestyle. Amen? What makes sin so deceitful is sin likes to tell all of us that we will never be found out. Sin likes to tell all of us that we will never be found out. <laughs> but if you were one God's children, he will rip that cover off of you. All truth must come out. Look at, the, look at what's going on today. We see all these famous people. I ain't gonna say no names, I should, but the covers be ripped off of them. Why? Because you're not gonna proclaim God and be sinning. He'll only, he'll only have mercy of long suffering with you for but a little while. And if you're affecting other people, and we got men and women of God that are affecting thousands of people, so sooner or later, God has to rip that cover off. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I know that's right. But sin likes to tell us all that we'll never be found out. Sin likes to tell us that we can keep doing it, and it absolutely has no effect on us spiritually at all. Sin is designed to zap you spiritually. 
It's called taking your anointing or stealing your anointing. Now the world calls it your aura. You know aura. Oh, brother, I like your aura. Oh, sister, you have such a great aura. <laughs> what sign are you? <laughs> You're great. <laughs> but sin will zap. And that's all the devil wants to do is take your anointing. You know, and he does it so subtly. What? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You know you've been trying to do the right thing and some of you brothers go to work. <coughs> you ain't never paid that woman no mind before in your life. She ain't never paid you no mind. But all of a sudden, one day, she looked cute. You <laughs> 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 gotta know it. All of a sudden, that big old pop belly man looked like he got a six pack and he looked so nice. <laughs> you didn't know. But the night before you were praying, God, I'm giving my son to you. She said, okay. Here comes Johnny Blow. Here comes Susie Ho. That's what you want to do. I know. But it's the truth anyway. I forgot he was in back of me. But they sent to what? Steal your anointing spirit. Amen? I'll prove it. Go to Romans. I like the Paul said, go to Romans chapter 7. Y'all pray for me, because tonight I didn't want to come tonight, but when God says come, you got to do it whether you feel good, don't want to, happy, sad. When he says, if you've got a call in your life to do what I told you to do, I don't care what you feel, I don't care what you're going through, you go do what I told you to do. Mess up. I'm like, God, I don't want to do it. Go. Amen. So we got to prayer. I'm going straight to prayer. Because <laughs> I need some prayer. I ain't lying. I got to have a prayer life. Hopefully you would get one too. But I'm here tonight because God ordered me. I tell you, Chin Ryan to come and drag me out the house too. And he's a big guy, I can't fight him. <laughs> oh, he said, I ain't gonna let you turn around, brother. I ain't gonna let you turn around. <laughs> Side trip. Anyway, Romans chapter, chapter seven, chapter seven, looking at verses nine through 11. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin did what? Revive itself, right? Sin revived, and I did what? Die. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found it to be unto what? Death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. And by it, did what? Kill me. Amen. Sleep. Ain't that awesome? Mm -mm. I don't even think I need to explain that one. Number two, what sin will do. Sin is habit forming. Sin is slavery. Hello. Sin is habit forming. And sin puts you in slavery. Amen. Amen. That's why we call it the crackhead, the pothead, the alky head. You put a hand on it because it done put you in slavery. It done became your God. It doesn't matter because you're serving it. I tell you what. Like the world said, whatever you mind or wherever you put your money to, that's your God. Amen. You know? I know most of us in here ain't got a check in your account or a checkbook, but if I see where your money's going, I know who you love most. Amen. 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 If your money's going to the alcohol, that's who you love. Uh -huh. Your money's going to the crack, that's who you love. Your money going to that woman who is not your wife, that's who you love. Your money going to some man who don't really love you, that's who you love. Amen. I know it's going to get quiet on that one. So, sin is happening for me, sin is slavery. Once you participate in sin and like it, amen. Nobody can like it. Come on. Once you participate in sin and like it, you will do it again. You will do it again. That's why I used to wake up. I ain't smoking the day. That one hit had me running all day long, chasing it. Only one baby. And here's the big deal today. I was watching a documentary on methamphetamine. I had a man they smoked this. We called it a monster when I was growing up. And it burned the nose so bad. But these kids are out here smoking it, blowing themselves up, shooting it in their arm. I didn't know you cooked that stuff with rat poison and all kinds of You can go in a drugstore and steal medicine packs and cook that and blow yourself up. Whoa! You got to be crazy. But they're chasing it like it's a man out of cheese. So if you're a meth addict, then they showed how the teeth got rotten and how it comes through it. Man, 
man, I don't know how y'all do it. I thought I did some crazy stuff. That meth is killing folks. That meth and that heroin is killing people. Left and right. I didn't even know you could smoke heroin. You can smoke anything now. But it's happened for me. Go to Proverbs 27. So once you participate in sin and like it, you will do it again. Amen. You will do it again. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Look at that verse 20. Proverbs 27, 20. And it says, Help and destruction are never fools. So the eyes of men are what? Never satisfied. Ain't that deep? Help and destruction are never fools. So your eyes are never satisfied. You see something, then you want more. Then you want more. And give me more. And give me more. Amen. 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 Once you do something that is wrong, and it begins to gratify your flesh, you will look for ways to do it again. And if it has not been crucified before God and taken to him in prayer, you will continually do it. What leads us to sin is the pleasure we find in it. But the thing that is so blinding is that while you keep dipping and dabbing, you become a slave to it. Amen. You're partying now, but you'll be crying later. You're partying now. But you'll be weeping later. I ain't never not weeping after a bitch. Cried like a bitch. Amen. Because God, I mean, you know, the devil put that guilt on you. Go to Ecclesiastes, chapter 5. Yeah, you're partying now, but you'll be crying later. It's a book right in front of Proverbs, it should be. A couple books in front of Proverbs. Right after. Ecclesiastes 5. Looking at verse, verse 10, Ecclesiastes 5, 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is vanity. What is vanity? This is pride. He that keeps loving it and loving it, it becomes prideful. It's vanity. Amen? Amen. Just wanted you to put that out there. This means that they are always looking for increase above Jesus. Some of you only come here because of the food. Some of you only come here because you think you can get a couple of dollars. You know what bothers me a lot? Now, I'm a giver, and I love giving. You know, but I see a lot of you, and I'm not pointing at them, I'm not beating you down. But I see the man of God on Sunday, and then I see people run right behind him and beg him for money. Like he's supposed to pay your rent. He just fed you. He just called you and he vetted you. And yet you want to come behind Pastor Zach, Pastor Zach, and then he comes out. Now, there's nothing wrong if you really got a need. Because I help people say, Lord, I need to catch a bus and go X, Y, Z. But you, that man, and then you want to try to make the man because he's a Christian, he's supposed to help you. Well, guess what? If you wasn't sinning, you would have the money. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you wasn't doing it wrong, you would have it. <laughs> no man of God has to participate in your sin. By giving you money that needs to help other people. Amen. In the way in the world. When well, you're supposed to, you're a pastor. Yeah, I'm a pastor enough to tell you, get out of my face. I'm not going to participate. <laughs> you ain't going to condemn me. <laughs> pastor, you got the past 96. Give me a break. Yeah, I'm glad. None of y'all know I ain't going to tell you that. Y'all better go cut me that. Because <laughs> I sure enough will put you in your spot, Dad. But if you hold me and I see you on the street, I'm going to take you go get something to eat. If you need something, boy, this man buys, you know, I've never seen a man of God who buys people prescriptions. Yes, Ain't no church in this country I ever heard of that pay for your prescriptions. And I don't even thank that man for that. Come on. Yeah, he's a little hungry sometimes. He's a human. Sometimes everybody, just because he's a pastor, don't mean he don't have mood swings. Because you didn't, instead of, instead of paying the bill, you went and spent the money on sin. Brothers went down there and went to the hotel motel instead of paying the bill, not in here. Sisters went and gave money to some joker 
Instead of paying. 